or a darker color blue, I guess. I want track 11. You'll also note the name of that sound sample in the bottom left corner. I want to fade, so I want to have a one second fade in and a one second fade out. I can use these presets down here or I can slide them as well. And I click OK and it gives me a visual indicator that it's fading in and at the end it's fading out. Now this yellow line up here tells me I've changed my audio and I haven't rendered or created it. So I go ahead and click on create and you can see that audio uh, renders or creates much quicker than video because there's much less information in the audio signal. It's good actually that we're seeing this because this is something that's important for you to learn as well. This red line tells me I have overmodulation or what's known as distortion. Either one of these sounds by themselves is fine, but when I put both of them in there, it's like taking an 8 ounce cup of liquid. Let's say my morning cup of coffee. Here's 8 ounces of coffee and here's maybe 6 ounces of coffee. And when I put either one of them will fit into the cup. But when I pour them in together, well, we've got, let's see, 14 ounces and that isn't going to fit in an 8 ounce glass. So what I need to do is reduce the intensity or reduce the volume of those two. So I could click on the C13 and reduce that volume level some and see if that goes ahead. Up, oh, still a really, really loud piece. So probably what I'm going to do, I could... Again, if this was a, a detailed production, one that you care a great deal about, you would have listened to and been very clear about all these steps. But I'm going to go ahead and, and, and oversimplify this and mute or subtract all the sound from this clip. So I click on C13. I tell the colors highlighted and the name of the clip down here in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to take the volume all the way down and it says muted. It turns dark and that tells me there is no audio any longer in that scene. Okay. When you look at the um, power key uh, manual, there's, there's a cool button. Control E will copy that onto the next function. So it'll just copy and mute all those at once. So a really, really cool capability. So we render or create that, and now we have a finished piece, almost. I'm going to add a narration track. Let's go check, and uh, I'm going to put the narration track on this track here, track number two. And I'm going to go ahead and let the title scene establish a shot. And so we'll bring in that narration piece right about here on C.2. So I click the Add button to bring up my choices, and I scroll up and down until I find my narration clip. And I could play it back, but I do happen to know that's the clip that I want to use. So I simply click OK, and it'll put that narration clip right in here today. And we click on Create. Now, it's probably going to be a little bit loud. My voice is going to be really loud relative to this, this scene here. So I'm actually going to do a quick correction. Now, we detail this in the tutorial for Smart Edit 3. Uh, the, there, there is, again, another one, of, another one of the tutorial DVDs you can get from your Casablanca dealer or uh, from us, Macro System US in Boulder, Colorado. And it details how you use this button here known as the envelope. And you can shape and modify the sound signal. But today I want to do something relatively simple. I just want track 11 to drop down. It's track number three, so I select track number three, and I'm going to lower the volume. Let's go about six decibels, okay, just during the time that my narration clip comes along. And it's hard to see, but if you go in close up, if I zoom in on this little guy, you can see that it will drop down just at the time. See that little dip right there? Just when the narration clip comes on. I go ahead and it's already been created or rendered. And so now let's watch and listen what we've got going on here. Experience the wonders of the undersea world at the Georgia Aquarium. Very nice, very nice, if I do say so myself. So in a relatively short period of time, we've learned and actually put together a, a very short video presentation. Now there's a whole host of other capabilities. We can bring in the effects, 
Remember I showed you that list of effects a little bit before uh, as part of the, the regular collection that comes with your Casablanca and the add-on set? You can access them here as well by left-clicking on one of these effects buttons and then you can add that effect as well. So some great capabilities right in the Casablanca interface. And the last thing I want to show you here, if you're doing a voiceover and you want to see your project as you are uh, narrating to it, for example, if you have to have something synchronized and you want to talk about a particular picture that's being seen, for example, if you're doing an oral history, you simply would connect a, a microphone or a microphone through a uh, audio mixer and by clicking on this narration button here, this will let me do a voiceover. It'll play back the video footage and allow me to record it at the same time. So some great capabilities right within the interface. Okay, so for the purposes of today's episode, oh, oh audio mix, we have that little change that I've just added. Let's subtract that little scene that I added there and go ahead and render or create so our audio's completely done. In fact, there is a place where you can go to make sure that all your visual effects, your titles, your image processing, and your audio has been completed, finished, and rendered, and that, logically enough, is the finish window. So we click on finish and it tells me my storyboard is 1 minute, 4 seconds, and 12 frames. And it tells me I have some effects that have not yet been created or rendered. And you see, it tells me now everything's been created or rendered and the Create button is no longer a choice. So I'm done. You have a couple of choices here in terms of the capability. We have the ability to record this out to analog videotape. So if you're using the S-Video ports or the composite video, the Phono RCA video port, you would select analog video connect your VCR and simply press playback while you click record on your VCR. And we kind of go ahead and go into the whole production. Now you could also record this out to DV tape via Firewire. Now to use this function, of, of course, you need to be connected to a DV tape deck or your DV camera. And remember not to hot swap those Firewire cables and I've already got my, my system turned on. But actually, before I go that, let me just quickly show you this button up here. There comes a time when you want to show just a portion of your storyboard. Remember I have this extra footage on here, and I only want to use the sea life, the aquarium, so I'm going to just go up to that last frame of black right there, and sure that we're on that last frame. So I'm only actually showing 42 seconds and 27 frames of the storyboard, and that's what will now be recorded out to DV tape. So I click uh, on this screen, for the transport controls and I click record to VCR and it will actually start my camera in this case or your tape deck begin recording and record the audio and video when it's done it'll click stop which is really cool now don't panic if you don't see the signal on your monitor all the system um, processing power is going to export in that footage and you will actually see it either in the viewfinder or in the pullout viewfinder of your camera and we've uh, done that so I can go ahead and click stop so those are the the two ways right now to get it out to DV tape the uh, as far as burning your footage to DVD or authoring a DVD for your audience uh, that's done in DVD arabesque and with DVD arabesque selected you simply start uh, click on the start program button but I'm gonna guide you to disk number two we have a very thorough tutorial on the use of Arabesque 3. In this menu, there's a brand new feature, and I'm delighted to bring it to our customers. Uh, so many people have been asking for this capability for the last few years, and the developers came through with flying colors. You might wonder, what language is this? Well, it's, it's just reverse. If you look at Arabesque, which allows you to take video and put it on a DVD, Kesabara is Arabesque backwards. Why? Because it lets us take footage from a DVD and bring it back into our scene bin. Very, very cool. Right now, this was designed and certified only to be used with uh, DVDs that you created and burned on your Casablanca using the Arabesque software. But even the previous versions of Arabesque will, will work with this new feature. And how it works is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and import footage. First of all, you could open up your DVD tray, put in a previously burned Arabesque DVD into your system, and once the disk is up to speed, you click Display Contents, and in a matter of moments, it shows you. In this case, I have five different films. Now, this is the demo DVD that we provide to people considering the Casablanca product line that, that shows off uh, the benefits and features of the system. 
Let's say I wanted to bring back some of that footage into my scene bin because I wanted to make some changes and to reuse footage. Very, very useful feature, whether you're a professional or a hobbyist, whatever you use your Casablanca for, in education or in ministry, this is a hugely beneficial feature. So let's say I'm going to just